Ray-Ban Stories These are not your regular brand sunglasses, but a love child of Facebook and Ray-Ban. They are lightweight and very stylish, smart glasses that allow you to pick up phone calls, listen to music and of course take photos and videos without holding a phone in front of you. Friends, we talk a lot about VR in this channel and AR is a big part of it too. But here's the plot twist. Ray-Ban Stories aren't actually augmented reality glasses. They have regular lenses and when you wear them, not Nothing is projected on top of it, even though they do feature two cameras. But we need to talk about these glasses because these are more of a stepping stone on their way to deliver true consumer augmented reality glasses. Their concept of AR glasses was introduced even during the previous Facebook Connect event in September 2020. And just so you know, Ray-Ban stories are not it yet, but they mark an important intermediate step before we get what we've been promised. And that's why we are looking at these glasses glasses today. Hi, this is Tatiana and this video is not sponsored neither by Facebook nor by Ray-Ban and I paid for these Ray-Ban wayfarers out of my own pocket, so rest assured that everything you will hear will be exclusively my own unfiltered thoughts and boy do I have some things to say. We will talk about technical specifications of these glasses, what these glasses can do, whether they are practical or useful and of course ethical and privacy concerns. Ray-Ban stories cost $300 which is double the price of the regular Ray-Ban wafers and today we're going to find out if they're worth the price. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the most interesting news in VR and AR and of course to support this channel. If you're ready, let's go! Let's start with the first look. What do we get straight out of the box? And a very pretty box it is. The glasses come in an expensive looking carrying case with a signature logo on the top, which is also a charging case so that your glasses can feed on the go. Along with a reference guide and the safety document, you also get a pretty short charging cable and that's about it. It's not a lot, but you don't need much, even though I was a bit surprised that there didn't include any microfiber cloth. Of course, who cares about the cables and the documentation? Let's clean up all this mess and look at our shades. Knowing what I was getting into, the first thing I saw when I opened the case were the two cameras staring right into my soul. But more about it later. I ordered the Wayfarer design as I thought it would be the safest choice since Wayfarer is Ray-Ban's signature look. I chose black frame and green lens. There are the total of three designs of Ray-Ban stories, but they are only different in their looks. The glasses themselves are quite lightweight. They weigh only about 5 grams more than the Ray-Ban's original Wayfarer design, so you could hardly tell the difference, which is very impressive. Dual 5 megapixel camera in the corners of the glasses look very subtle, and I would say you only notice them if you know to look for the cameras. Overall, the design is exactly the same as the original Wayfarers. There is a single physical button on the top right side used to take photos and videos, and on the inner side of the left temple, there is a physical slider used to turn the glasses on, off, and set them in the Bluetooth pairing mode. There are also two speakers on the bottom sides of the temples and two LED lights. Although you can see them, but the glasses also have touch sensors on the outer parts of the right temple and a microphone. Overall, the glasses look pretty solid. They are sturdy, but the temples are not too stiff. You get the expansive feel when you're holding these glasses. No flimsiness, your style. But I didn't pay $300 for style alone, so let's set them up and see what we're dealing with from the technical side. To set up these glasses, we need to install Facebook View app on Apple or Android. If you haven't guessed it already, of course, of course, you will need to sign in with your Facebook account. We're not even surprised by it anymore. And then connect your Ray-Bans to your phone via Bluetooth. Overall, pairing was simple and uneventful. But the app then asked me to set up Facebook Assistant in order to take photos and videos by saying, hey, Facebook, take a video. But that's creepy as hell and I didn't want to do this, so I skipped it. It kind of teaches you everything your glasses can do. For example, sliding forward and backward on the right temple will increase or reduce the volume. And you can also accept or reject calls directly from your glasses. That's not bad at all. The LED light has four color indicators, white, green, orange, and red. If you think red is the one used to show the recording is in progress, then you're mistaken. It's actually white. Yes, the least noticeable color of all that could be, and they chose this color to indicate to other people that you're recording. 
so most probably without their consent, but more about it later. Believe it or not, Facebook is going to collect your data while using Ray-Ban stories. How much are you surprised? The app is going to tell you that Facebook only collects the data required to make sure the glasses are working properly, but that is a very broad term. And if you dig deeper in the privacy and data collection documentation, you will find some stuff there that's vague as sh but you don't even have to go that far because you can choose to share additional data to improve the product experience. Yeah, because that's what you want to do. Basically, in addition to giving them all the metadata of your usage, you can share things like number of images captured, time spent taking videos, and the average length of the videos. So basically everything but the actual images and videos based on this disclaimer. Obviously, I didn't share any of that and I don't see why any of you should. Speaking of the duration of the videos that you can take, the maximum length of each individual video is 30 seconds, which according to Facebook is kind of because of the privacy concerns and some storage limitations. But one might wonder just how much of action could you be able to capture with only 30 seconds. In addition, the video resolution is 1184 by 1184 pixels. So maybe it would work for Instagram, but that's about it. You may also store roughly 500 photos with the resolution 2592 by 1944. So I immediately went on to take a few pictures and videos. And since my cat was the only interesting thing around me at the time, he's going to star in this video. While the website states that the camera automatically adjusts to the light around, I could see a considerable degrading in the quality of the photos when taking in poor light. It looked pretty grainy, although considering the small size of the camera, even that is impressive, I guess. Also, I've noticed something very strange during the post-production of this video. When I put one of the pictures on top of the video, certain parts of it are semi-transparent. You can see the layer of the video below it as if I increase the transparency level of parts of this image. I don't know how to explain it. Synchronizing with the app was surprisingly fast and it worked flawlessly every time. Because there are two cameras on both sides of the glasses, the app allows you to create three types of videos with a 3D effect. These are some fun things that you can do with a dual camera, even though it's not much and I don't really know what you're going to use them for. Like I said, these are not AR glasses. They don't do all that fun AR stuff that you could see in like Snapchat glasses and it's a shame. So if Ray-Ban stories don't do AR, the least that we could hope for is that they produce some decent quality photos and videos. These glasses really struggled when I was taking videos with low light, as you can see by all the fuzz which is especially visible on the walls, so I was kind Kind of disappointed. Not only do we get a crippled resolution instead of the desired 1920 by 1080, but we also get the video quality of cell phones from 10 years ago. But I thought I wouldn't focus on the negative and instead enjoy the affordances of these Ray-Ban stories, which is of course taking videos without holding the phone in front of you. And what is a better way to enjoy it than to go for a bike ride? I was somewhat relieved to see the better quality of the video when recording with the natural light. And what's especially impressive is how smooth my videos looked. If you create any kind of VR content, you probably quickly realize that even the slightest head shaking can considerably affect the quality of the video. And I was afraid that that would be the case for the Ray-Bans as well, but the motion smoothing in this device worked wonders. I was riding a bike on a partially bumpy road and the recording was as smooth as silk. And it was was truly a pleasant surprise. Now a little bit about the battery. While riding a bike, I recorded a total of 12 30 second videos continuously one after the other. Prior to that, I had also taken five pictures and I also used the glasses to speak on the phone for about 18 minutes. That's the total of 25 minutes of continuous use of the glasses. During those 25 minutes, the battery charge dropped from 100 to 36%. So I used almost two thirds of the battery in 25 minutes. That should give you a pretty good idea of the battery capacity in these glasses. With intensive use, it's probably going to last you around 40 to maximum 50 minutes at best. I know many of you must be quite disappointed at this because not only are we limited with a silly 30 second cap on the videos, but it looks like we can't record a whole lot even if we keep clicking on the record button because the glasses might simply die. And that's probably the main reason that they made the charging case, which is like a power bank. And when you put your glasses in to charge, you can see the charge level on both your Ray-Bans and your charging case. 
I've mentioned that I was using these glasses to talk on the phone, so let's talk about that. The speakers on these Ray-Bans are not impressive by any means, especially on higher volume. The sound gets fuzzy and unpleasant. However, I wouldn't be using the sound on maximum anyways, because then uh, everyone around you would be able to hear your conversation. I usually set up to low or medium volume on these glasses, and it works quite well for me. Again, the sound quality was not very good, but on the other hand, it wasn't unusable. So if I wanted a hands-free device and I didn't have uh, wireless headphones, then I would use these glasses. And the microphone picked up my voice quite well, even if I put the sunglasses on top of my head like this, like a headband, it still picks up my voice. And yes, this is how I wear my sunglasses sometimes. As for listening to music, obviously quality sound is much more important than, and these speakers perform all right, at least on low and medium volume. It sounds pretty clean, and unless you are in a completely silent room, people won't be able to hear what you're listening to. I speculated that listening to music would drain considerably less battery than taking photos or videos, so I decided to test it. With the battery completely full, I left my Ray-Bans play some Spotify playlist and see how much charge it would lose. The total of one and a half hours of continuously playing music drained almost half of the battery. So if music is all you're using these glasses for, you'll be able to get solid three hours of Spotify time. And the selling point of Ray-Ban stories is not the speakers, but the camera. So if you're using these glasses for three hours straight just to listen to music, I mean, good for you. But if you're also taking pictures and videos or taking phone calls, then the battery will drain much faster. Another interesting detail that I've noticed about these glasses has to do with Bluetooth pairing. To set Ray-Ban stories into pairing mode, you need to push this trigger in the direction of the lenses and hold it like that for 5 seconds. After that, your glasses will become discoverable on your phone and you will be able to pair them. When you open the temples, the glasses will make an unbeat chiming sound, which means that they are in the active mode. And if you play any music or video, these glasses will be selected automatically as your audio output. When you close the temples, the audio output will be automatically changed to your phone. This is pretty cool and it worked flawlessly every time I tried it. But I also wanted to see what the pairing would be like if I completely shut down the glasses and then turn them on again. So when I turned them back on, the glasses did not pair automatically with my phone. Moreover, they didn't pair even after I tapped on the Ray-Ban Bluetooth device on my phone. The annoying thing is that after you turn on your glasses off and then back on, even if you had them paired with your phone before, you will need to bring them in the pairing mode again by pushing this trigger for 5 seconds until this LED indicator turns blue. It's not that big of a deal, but I just don't understand why it has to be done this way, because it's just really annoying little detail. And finally, the privacy policies and the information about the data they are collecting are shady AF. Let's start from the top. When you install the app on your phone, one of the pages gives you the information about the kind of metadata that the app may collect and that it does not give Facebook access to your photos and videos. Sounds good. But the fine font shows us that there's also supplemental Facebook data policy. And under what kinds of information do we collect? They listed photo and video information, including photos and video recording. Do you see the contrast between what's listed in the app and what's listed on this website? Granted, they did specifically say that cameras and microphones need to be activated for them to collect information, but that alone is still very unsettling to me. And that's not it, because all of this page is also just an addition to Facebook data policy. And here we see yet another list that enumerates everything that Facebook collects. If you haven't seen this already, this includes your content, photo, locations, and also things like what you see through features we provide, such as our camera. If you think about it, we are way on our way to becoming Facebook spies. From the ethical perspective, having subtle cameras in sunglasses is a very questionable choice. Taking pictures and videos of people without their consent is a very big deal in the modern society, and these glasses may potentially open the Pandora box of all kinds of creepy interactions and vile intentions because we are not used to having cameras in our glasses, and we are not looking for them when we see someone wearing shades. 
The least that could be done is advertise the recording process better with a flashing yellow or red light, not a static white light that could be confused with a light reflection. The ethical sensitivity of this issue combined with the fact that it is Facebook of all the companies that will have access to this data is making Ray-Ban Stories a very unsettling device that may be solving a small problem of recording some fun moments of people's lives but potentially creating a much larger problem of overstepping people's boundaries and violating their privacy. And okay, ethics and privacy aside, I would like to say a few final words regarding the technical aspects of Ray-Ban Stories. I don't know about you, but I feel like they are selling us a half-baked product, or at its best, a prototype. Because what these glasses do sounds kind of cool in theory. The functionality of Ray-Ban Stories is already very basic and simple, taking pictures, videos, syncing them with your phone, listening to music, and picking up phone calls. It barely qualifies them as smart glasses, but even in these simple functionalities, the glasses are not that impressive. The picture and video quality are kind of okay, but only if you have great light and only 30 second videos and strange resolutions. The speakers are fine and the battery works for listening to music, but other than that the capacity is very limited. To me Ray-Ban Stories feels like a prototype and not a final product. It's a concept of glasses that look and feel like regular glasses, but also do a few other tricks, like an extension of your phone. In theory, this sounds good, they nailed down the appearance, the glasses are lightweight and comfortable, but this is in no way a practical device. Everything it does is inferior to any other modern device uh, designed for that specific purpose. I'm a bit surprised that this product is mass-produced because I don't believe it brings value to consumers. I don't see it being practical. Regular Wayfair glasses cost $150 and Ray-Ban Stories Wayfair are double the price and technically extra $150 on top of the brand glasses, it's not that much for the technology we're getting, but it shows. This price directly reflects the quality of the gadget's technical parameters. So just so you know, if you're buying a pair of Ray-Ban Stories, you buy them to show them off in front of your friends and not as a practical device. I hope you found value in this video. Let me know what you think about Ray-Ban Stories in the comments below. And if you already bought Ray-Ban Stories also, you know, share your opinions about it and whether you agree with my thoughts and uh, what do you think about this device. Thank you so much for watching, friends. And remember to subscribe for more VR and AR content. Stay safe and as always, happy gaming.